you who say that one should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who are poor idols, do you rob temple? You who boast in the law through your transgression of the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as in the For indeed, circumcision is a value, a value if you practice the law. But if you are a transgressor of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So if an uncircumcised man observes the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And he who is physically uncircumcised, if he, he fulfills the law, will he not judge you who, through the letter of the law of circumcision, are a transgressor of the law? And for he is not a Jew who is one unworthy, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one innerly, inwardly, and circumcision is, the, which, is that which is of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is and his praise is not from him, but from God. So that's, uh, I got a whole All right, so we're going to, like I said, we're going to focus in on uh, 17 through 24. No, thank you. Yep. And, uh, so as we look at that, like I said, uh, as, we, as we look at coming into this, we kind of missed a week, so I'm going to kind of backtrack to what we've looked at over the last few weeks uh, out of the end of chapter 1 into the first part of chapter 2, and now we're at the, toward the end of chapter 2. But what was Paul's concentration as he, he, as he got to verse 18 of chapter 1? And we moved into last week, or two weeks ago, to finish up with two cities. What was the purpose? What is Paul trying to get at? What have we been talking about for at least three, three or four weeks? God's wrath. God's wrath. His condemnation of sin. His condemnation of people who are in sin. And we talked about that in judgment and judgment of those who are lost versus judgment uh, of those who are saved. And in fact, I'm working on that right now. When we come back on the new year, probably the first week or two, we will talk about the judgments. And we'll, we'll get them clear in our head so we have a clear understanding. So that it's Paul, because Paul's going to be talking judgment, even as he grows out, uh, starting three, three point one and forward, he's still going to bring judgment and stuff in there. So, so that's what Paul's been after. His first section, or verses 18 through 26 or so, there in the uh, end of chapter 1, he was talking about what kind of people? Those who had given over, totally gave up and over to sin. They, they just totally gave up and said, we're going to do this. So Paul was after them, talking about that. He talked about what? General revelation. In other words, there's no excuse for people not to know there's a God. They might not know the saving power of that God, because they've got, got special revelation from them. But they, from just knowing that, and we gave an example. Paul, as he talked, no, he talks to the uh, people, and he says, I, I know you have a idol to an unknown God. Well, let me tell you about that unknown God. I know him. And let me tell you what his power is. It's not that idol that you've got stuck up there. So, so that was the intent of Paul as he does, is to talk to that, and he, he goes to talk to that whole ideal of God's wrath. It's just kind of, it, it's, it's on the verge. He's holding it back because of, of what? What's holding God's wrath back? His grace, his mercy. It's, that's what's holding back, his timeline. It, that's what's holding back. That's the only thing holding back. Is that he has mercy because he has a timeline in which things to happen, and he's he's honoring that timeline that he set forth in, in motion. And so that's what Paul's after. He's after those people who are there. And then Paul jumps to a different group of people, still lost, still sinning, but they are they, they're this moral type of people. They're the people who think that they're good. What they do is good and good enough to make it to whatever. They're they're good people. And we, we talk about that a little bit as well. That we know people who are good people. But just because they're good doesn't get them to heaven. Only 
Jesus gets them to heaven. All the goodness that they can, they can do is just that stuff they can do. It's not nothing that gets them to where they need to be. Because only what? What did we talk about the Bible? Who can balance the state? Who can make this right? That's Jesus. He's the only one. There's nothing we can do. There's no list of things we can do. There's no acts we can do. And again, we can be kind hearted of people. We can be a lot of things. But that doesn't balance the scale. Only Jesus does. And that's the thing. And that's the, what Paul's getting after with those guys. Hey, your morals and stuff. And oh, by the way, to start the night, he's really going to put it on to the Jewish people. And, uh, as far as that whole thought process of, of being good enough to make it. And uh, so, anyway. But that's kind of where we've been in the last year. That's what Paul said. Again, we talked about it from the very get go. In order to understand the good news, we have to understand what the bad looks like. We have to understand how good God was, how good God is, but by knowing how bad people are and what he, what his holiness drives to. He, he's got to do that. I mean, his holiness says, I have to put you to death. Jesus is the only way that you don't make you have to get to death. Any other way but Jesus and your, and your, and your punishment or just punishment is death. So that's what we're looking at. So if we look at tonight and there, uh, we start there. Uh, I want to, it, it kind of breaks out lately. Uh, again, I've, I've told you a hundred times, I'll tell you about a hundred thousand more times before we finish Romans. I don't make up anything. I read, I listen, I do. And so the outline that I'm using tonight comes from Dr. Steve Lawson. Uh, and it, it, but it lines right up with the scripture, so I'm not opposed to scouting with it to use it for us to talk about these, these uh, 17 through 24 uh, tonight in, in light of that. So if we, as we look at verses 17 and 18, it says, But if you bear the name Jew and rely upon the law and boast in God and know his will and approve the things that are essential, being instructed out of the law. So the first thing we see is what? What's the first word? But. But. If I got a different word, transitional word, does everybody say but? Yes. Okay. So for Paul, what does but really, what's he doing? He's been talking, talking, talking. Now what's he doing? The but says, now I'm taking a, a hard ride. Now, because again, who's reading this letter? Up to this, who's reading this letter? The church of Rome? The, the believers in Rome? In the midst of that, it's probably some Jewish people? Some Gentiles as well. Probably more Gentile than Jews, but there's definitely some Jews mixed in here. So can you imagine as Paul is berating the Gentiles, he, he's talking to them and saying, look, this is these are the things, and he begins to describe all the unfaithfulness, all the sin, all the ugliness of that. You can you can envision a Pharisee looking on to this and thinking what? What do you think? What would the Pharisee think if Paul's writing up until verse 17? I don't know, brother. There you go. <laughs> they be cheering. They, they, you can put them in a box, in, in one of them, uh, what do you call them? Uh, cheer boxes, and they be shouting and waving banners, saying, yep, 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 yep. Until they get to verse 17. Then he swivels and he says, what to them? Bear the name G. Is that kind of huh? There you go. Bear the name you call again you call G. What if I got there any other verbiage in that? In that thought right. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, oh, okay, he's swimming and he says, you who call yourself Jews, that's what he's that he's kind of being sarcastic at. Why? Because in the in the world of the Pharisees, what made them a Jew? Their lineage. 
Nothing about what they did was godly. Nothing about what they did was obedient to God's word. Nothing about what they did was being uh, a, a Jew at heart, a child uh, of uh, a nation for, for, of God. They, they were just Jew by name and Jew by heritage. And that's what Paul's alluding to here. He's, he's calling them out, saying, you call yourself a Jew, but you're not a Jew. Because here, and we're going to talk about it, in fact, if you'll take a few seconds while I'm uh, talking at you, in chapter 2, how many times do you see the word lost? It's, it, just take a quick look. In chapter 2 of the law, Paul uh, talks, uses the word the law or law. How many times do you see it written? Up? It'll vary a little bit by your translation. I don't know if some translations don't. Um, six. Six? Six. In chapter two? Chapter two. Yeah. Yeah, there's six or seven just in the verses we talked about. Six, seven, and verse 12 and 13. Yeah. Yeah. So somewhere in the neighborhood of 19 to 24, you find in chapter 2, depending again the translation and how they wrote, they defined that. But somewhere in the 19 to 24 range. So do you think the law was important to Paul? Do you think it was important to the text he's writing? Why would you think it's important? Why would Paul use the law so often when he's speaking to the Jewish people? What's driving his train? They were given the law, and they were supposed to, you know, be the light to the rest of the world, and the law teach the people. They, exactly. They had the law. They had what, they had that special, instead of the general revelation, they had the special revelation, because they had God's word. They had the law. They had what God introduced up to that point. They had it. It was in their possession. So if anybody didn't have an excuse, they didn't have the excuse because they had that word that they could rely on. And that's what Paul's trying to get after because why? They had what to God's law? Access. They had access to it. But what had they did in that access, especially Pharisees had seeds, the scribes, then what did they do to the law? They added to it. So they basically what? Nullified God's law. Because they took all of his intent and they just kept pounding humanness on top of it and it no longer served what God had recently intended. When we look at the Sermon on the Mount, what does Jesus say? The crux of what he said on the Sermon on the Mount is this. You say this, but I'm telling you it's your heart. And that's what we'll get after next week. It's your heart that's, that's got to be uncertain, that's got to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. It's your heart that's got to be changed. It's your heart that's obedient to the law. It's not just outwardly self. You can outwardly make enough rules that you can work yourself into being check, I made that. Check. Because they can say, hey, I didn't kill nobody. Check. Mm -hmm. I didn't commit adultery. I just went ahead and married her, so now it's not adultery no more. You know, I didn't have an idol, but yet we're going to talk about it. They bought the idols from, they went in and raided and, and, and pilfered other idols and things and sold it for the money in life. And their take on that was, well, I'm doing it for the glory of God because I just took down that idol, even though I just made a thousand bucks on it. I did the right thing. I took it away. I made me a little money. Everybody's happy. Why's happy? Because they come wild. I'm happy because I got extra thousand bucks more. 
So, so they, they were no way, shape, or form. That's what Paul was trying to say. You are Jew only because you, you're, you were born a Jew. You are not Jew in any other fashion. That's what Paul was trying to do after this. He, and he goes on to say, he gives them, you know, and, and then he says, because you what? So they have, we talked about it, they have the privilege of the law. They can rely upon the law. They can boast in God. Who is the most boastful people of the Jewish nation? The Pharisees and Sadducees, because they boast in the fact that he's God, he's our God, even though I'm not obedient to everything he's telling me, he's still God, I can boast in that. He says, you can, they, can, they had the privilege of knowing God's will. They had the privilege of what? Being instructed out of the law. Does that sound familiar as to Southeast Texas? Are we not privileged Christians? Do we not grow in, in an area that you can... I don't have to throw hard. I'm, I've got a bad... Or, but I guarantee I can throw the rocks hard enough and I can hit a certain problem <coughs> or two. And in some cases, you go to some towns and there's Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, they, they, all, they took a corner of the intersection. So we, we grew up in a nation where we're not, we're not, we are in a privileged, just like they were in a privileged setting as a Jewish people, they were privileged. They, because God had called them to be his. And we are in the same boat. And do we not, and again, if we think hard, do we not sometimes get like these? Do we not get a little bit haughty, judgmental in our, in our attitudes? I don't want to get down to too many rabbits, but I, 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 I want to go down this one a little bit because I I'm already started studying more the beam of seed and, and all that. And one of the thought processes is that that I'll share tonight just because I want I think it fits. One of the ideas is we're looking as we look forward to that time in our life when God calls us to be judged. At the being of seed. And again, not judged for condemnation, but judged because of what we've done in our life. We need to live today like we're there tomorrow. We need to be doing things today that make an effect that are gold and diamonds and, and not pay and stubble. We need to make our decisions today like we're standing in front of Jesus tomorrow. We may be. That is correct. <laughs> but when the beam of seed come, I, I, it, and again, we'll talk about a great thing, but, but again, the idea for me that I'm, I'm coming away with is that even in salvation, and we have it, the real God has to be for the glory of God, not for the glory of us. If we're doing something to get patted on the back. We're doing something good. I'm not saying it's bad. If we're doing things good, but it's for our thought processes to get patted on the back or make somebody look at me a little better, then we miss the ball. I'm telling you now, based on what I've said just to this point, it ain't gonna be nothing but a fire on it, it's gonna it's gonna be gone. Lesson a week is gone. Because if it ain't for God, if you did do it in God's Time in God's glory and God's grace and God's intent. If you're not thinking that way, that hey, what am I doing? What does God call me to do today? What am I supposed to do? If you're not doing those things, then all you have is hate stuff. And it's going to burn. Take it from me, having been a kid of probably 12 years old, I guess it was, on a Sunday night, right before church, I said, fire on the straw. <laughs> it went, Ooh. Real quick, got away from me quickly. Me and Stan got whooped. But I took a long time to put a water hose trying to get that, that pile of strong. <laughs> That's the reason I have on stuff that isn't for the God. It's going to burn just like that. You know, the fire, you're going to hit it with the fire, and it's going to be gone. You'll be going, wait, 
I work harder than that. God, what do you mean it's burnout? Anyway. But again, that's what Paul did after he said, Your privilege, Jewish uh, dear people, your privilege because God called you. You're his people. He's giving you the law. The law in which you can be instructed by. You can call him Jehovah. You're privileged. And that's what he's trying to get, is that those people, but in their privilegedness, they're still lost as good. That's what he's trying to say. You call yourself a Jew? That's all you call yourself, because that's all you are. You're a Jew in that. Because you're not uh, saved. You're not of Christ, God, of Christ. So that's it. So we, we look on the. We move on to uh, verses 19 and, and 20. And then 19 and 20, there are a couple of things. Well, you'll see it. There's three laws, moral, uh, ceremonial, and civil. But Paul's emphasis is on the moral law. It's the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments, that's what he's emphasizing. They're obedience to the Ten Commandments. And again, it's obedience of the heart, not obedience of the outside. We can all check off. I did that. Check. I did that. Check. But if my heart is not there, it doesn't matter. And that's there. So there. And I gave you a few more notes in there. And I'm going to for the time on the move test them. But you see that uh, point two under the law is purpose of the moral law. And, and I ask you to take note of that. <laughs> All right, then we look at 1920, the four practices. Paul talks to about their practices. He says, that, and are confident that you yourself are tied to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of the immature, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and of truth. So what Paul there? He's talking that this is how they, they deal with life, their practices. Is what is the way Dr. Lawson kind of described it. But the idea here is what? What's Paul trying to get after? What did they think of themselves? They thought a lot about themselves. They thought that they were what? The holy of the holies. There you go. <laughs> they thought they, uh, they were answered to the what? The blind. And that's not a physical blindness, that's a spiritual blindness. They thought they, they were the answer to those who didn't know. The blind, they couldn't see. We, they thought they, their practice would they could lead them out. They could lead them out. They, they could uh, lie to those who are in darkness. And that word darkness there has that picture of what? Uh, uh, total darkness, spiritual darkness, that whole blindness that comes with sin. And these Jews thought they had the answer to that. They did have it, and that's God. But they didn't have it in themselves. That's what Paul's trying to get at. It's not a part of you. That you're not a part of the foolish. The foolish there is the idea of those that have uh, philosophers and the Greek philosophers and stuff. The, the human wisdom people. They thought that, that they were the curators of that. Of those people. That they could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and be bold in there. But the idea here, though, is that they had a, a preconceived idea that they were teachers of the immature. And again, immature, that's our A translation, is infant. So they are teachers of infant. And, and a couple of the teachers there talked about it. Could, Paul could have been talking about uh, several things, but the, I think the idea here would be is those Gentile uh, proselytes who were trying to convert into Judaism, that these these guys, these people would be the ones who would boastfully say, hey, I got the way. I can get you through this. We can walk this dog, and we can do these things. And that, and that. So, so the idea here, though, is that they thought that they were bigger, better, and more important in their practices than they really are. That's what Paul's trying to get at. You do all these things thinking that you're a pretty good judge. But at the end of the day, Paul's going to say, and again, next week we'll, we'll talk about it. He's going to tell them you're not. You're not. And again, we go back to... Uh, we can even think of that today. How many, how many people, or how many 
religious religious type people do you know that that think of themselves that way, but yet there's no servitude to the father, no servant heart in their attitudes or anything. They're just people who say that these are I can do these things on their own. They, there's nothing of God built into into that thought process. <laughs> And we know some people, we know people like that. We know people who, who do that, who, who just think of themselves as good people, who are, are scholarly people, who are, are wise people it, from a worldly perspective, but they've not met Jesus. And so they're there. So it's, it's not up there. Then we look at, we move on to another uh, verses 21 and 22. And Paul says here, Do you therefore who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that one shall not steal, do you steal? You who say that one should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob do you rob temple? So it goes Paul goes one step further, he kind of looks at, you know, that. So what's Paul saying? What do you think he's saying? When he says, Who did you, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? Question mark. They don't practice what they preach. <clears throat> do one thing, say something else. You stand before people and teach, but yet you don't bring it inward to teach yourself. It goes on to say, you who preach that one shall not steal, do you steal? Question mark. Third question. Those of you who say that one should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Fourth question. You who are poor idols, do you rob temples? And again, this is all these things are practices that these people, these Jewish people did, but they were guilty of, of the offense themselves. Well, they were. I think what he's saying is that they're presenting an outward picture, a picture of being clean, and on the inside they're not. Exactly. They're just trying to show, show what everybody looks at. It looks like they're one thing. It's like a, like we call a white sepulcher. You know, a, a tomb that's white on the outside, but the inside is dirty. They're being built in, stay here, and all the other things that go along with it. So you're exactly right. They're on the outside, and I'm on the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I haven't been in a human one, but I had the privilege of being an animal by accident. Attached to the smell and the, the odor and all the other things that go with having buried an animal too sharp, too shallow. But again, you're right on. That's what Paul, he's got. He's got these compartments saying, you do these things, but do you not do it yourself? You say don't steal, but you steal. You say don't do uh, idols, but you go in and you do that. You say don't commit adultery, but you commit adultery. You say you teach them, but you don't even teach yourself. You tell people what to do, but you don't reverse that back to what you need to do. So exactly right. And then we in verse 23 to 24, so we've we've had four, four, and four, and then we got one punch, one judge, one punch. And, and look at it, verses 23 through 24. You who boast in the law through your transgression of the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as it is written. Does anybody know where that, the one that's capitalized comes from? Does anybody know the scripture? Isaiah, something. Isaiah 25, 5. Is that the one? 52, 5. Yeah, 52, 5. Yeah. Right yeah, but fifty-two five is derived out of Ezekiel. So if you go to Ezekiel, if you have a chance, go to Ezekiel thirty-six, verses 20, 21, 22, There's there's quite a few on there, but they all talk in that same nature. And one is just. What is Paul just to the Jews at, to, at this point? Why is he saying what he just said in verses 20 21? 
y'all are the reason why the Gentiles ignore God, blaspheme God, don't find God. You are the reason they don't find God. You're the reason that you're blaspheming. You must be the son of the reason y'all. Well, that's the cool. <laughs> And then you need to learn a little bit of that. But anyway, but you're right. You should probably get something else. That's a fact. Uh, but the idea, though, is exactly that. Paul was telling them, y'all who call yourself, you who call yourself Jews, you who have carry the name Jew as a part of your character and a part of your makeup, you are the reason the Gentiles are lost. You're the reason God hasn't brought the Gentiles to say it You're the reason why the Gentiles blaspheme the name of God. You, your lifestyle, your hypocrisy. That, that and Paul just points them in others. He's walking through the things that, that were characteristic of them at that time. He's walking through all these things. And he punches them in the nose in these two verses and says that it's you. It's you is why they're there. It's you why I spent the last three or four or five paragraphs talking about the Gentiles and the lostness that they're in and the sin that they're caught up in. You are the reason I'm doing it. I did that. Just up to, you know, so now Paul did what? Has done what? He has now brought everybody, everybody now falls into one category. We have sinned and we fall short of the glory of God. Everybody. We don't get, nobody gets to pick and say, no, I don't pick that group. Paul says, no, that poor, uh, I'm clear, clearly telling you now, we're all falling short of God's right, glory and his mark on the wall. It's all of us. It's not Jews separately. It's not Gentile separately. It's not barbarian separately. It's not moral people who are good people but they're lost separate. We're all in the same boat. We need what? We're going to need the good news that Paul's going to start talking about here in about a paragraph and a half. In three weeks, when we come back in the new year, Paul will begin to, to, to march forward to telling us what the good news looks like. Telling us what the advantage of the good news is. Telling us the power of the good news. And he walks us through those chapters from 3 to 16. We're going to know. But again, Paul is now gathering up everybody in the same level saying, we all, you all fit here. This is your starting point. This is the bad news. You're all going to hell. You're all sinners. You all deserve the wrath God has for us. We all do that. So that he can then take us from there. So as we close out tonight, that's the thing I want to say. Well, again, next week, we'll, we'll get into some of the things that Paul really uh, breaks the heart with them. But again, I think the takeaway for us is that uh, we can't lose sight of that fact that everybody, <coughs> we're in this together, and it's only by the grace of God and the blessing of Jesus that we're not going to So when we lose sight of that and we stop the, and we fail to be people, in other words, we fail to share with people God's grace, God's good news. When we stop doing that kind of thing, then we are the ones guilty of them going to hell. And I say that not, that I don't mean that in the pure sense. I mean it in that if God gave you the opportunity and gave you the option to share with someone and you don't do it, what is that? It's obedience. Is a and if we don't do it, were we the one that God wanted to plant the seed so he can store water? He's got to wait for somebody else to come running around there and scatter the seed with that person or for the growth stall. Again, God's 
uh, God's grace, God's mercy, God's uh, providence is all in play. But my point is, is when we fail to do what it, what God has called us to do, we do a couple of things. One, we stop something that God had intended to do. And more importantly, that opportunity, that seed planting, could have been a gold nugget on the other end that would have came through the fire. So anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, I didn't finish early, but I could have worked out a couple of Really good jokes. <laughs> yeah, I could taste the rabbit. But, anyway, so it... Again, uh, I encourage you uh, for next week to finish up the chapter two there. So, do y'all uh, look at it uh, again? It has, for me, it has grit and, and, and it's like if you read it for God to change you, then every once in a while you feel false hope. You know you're not a Jew. You know we're not a Jew. It's for me, some of the folks that he poked at the Jews, he could be poking us in the chest. You know? You're just like, you had that same opportunity. You, I gave them the word there. Has he not given his word here? He's given us, we've got his word here. He's given it there. So. Yes, as children of, of, of the Lord, we are his family and we are called out. Anyway, thank y'all very much. We get out and get a five minute break for my watch. Appreciate it. Thank y'all much. Have a great week. We'll see you Sunday.